Hey guys, Sketch Boy here, and today I am underneath a 1996 Toyota Tacoma, and I'm going to be replacing the center support bearing, and we're going to be removing the dry shaft. It's going to be lots of fun. Okay, so first step, before you do anything, make sure the transmission's in gear or park, and also apply the handbrake or emergency brake so everything is safe. All right, so I'm under the truck and you can see the um, center support bearing has quite a bit of play in it. I'm just moving the dry shaft up and down to show you how much play I actually have. I have about an inch and a half play, which is not good. So definitely time to replace. Alrighty, so when you want to take the whole dry shaft assembly apart, um, I usually do it in a sequence. So usually start from the back and lower it down start to lower it down and then lower the support bearing down and then finally take it off the studs on the transmission flange there's actually studs there um, it's not a bolt so that's the way you take it off um, usually it comes off fairly easily okay so before you remove the dry shaft what you want to do is grab some chalk or some kind of marker want to mark the dry shaft flange and where it mounts up to the transfer case and this makes sure that you put it on the exact same way it came off even though it probably won't really make a difference it's just better if you mark it same way it came off and also we'll be marking here once we take the dry shaft off and I'll be marking this little spline here because this can come apart too and you don't want it to be unbalanced because you can see there's a weight there and there's also a weight up here and I believe there's a weight somewhere here. You want to make sure it's all balanced so you don't get some kind of weird wobble. Alright, I got my rubber mallet. We're going to hit it a couple times. should come off the flange. Once that's down, then you're going to go up to your center support bearing. Loosen those two bolts, bring the whole dry shaft down, and then slide it off of the transmission flange. Alright, I got the whole dry shaft assembly out, sitting on my tailgate here. And um, we got our double carbon universal joint there, and we got our center support bearing right there, pretty loose. Um, has quite a bit of play in it, definitely wore out. I'll show you, I'll spin it around here. You can see how uneven it is here. Yeah, definitely. Definitely time to replace. Also, the rubber was cracked as well. So, yeah, we're going to be replacing that. Um, we're going to be separating this dry shaft with four bolts there, and we're just going to separate it. There's going to be a nut in the middle, and that's what we're going to be taking out next. All right, so I got the dry shaft off, disconnected it from the front dry shaft, and now you have a two-part dry shaft. And this is your 24 millimeter nut that holds this flange on. And normally this piece of metal here is folded in so it wouldn't back all the way out. So you want to get a screwdriver, pop that out. And then you want to grab an impact usually. Or if you don't have an impact then you can just put it in the vise if you want. And grab yourself an impact with a 24 millimeter or 11 16 and just go on there and zip her off just like that as simple as that and that'll come off and then once you have that nut off um, you can grab a magnet there's actually a washer there so you want to take that off make sure you don't lose that and then just put that aside and um, the whole thing should actually come apart here let me just readjust so yeah the flange just kind of sits on those splines there and um, you actually kind of want to mark this so you don't mess it up mess the phasing up there's actually a, a like a rivet punched in there a dot sorry and that's kind of like a master key spline I guess but yeah that thing just slides off pretty easily you can see it's a little rusty there and there's also a washer there you don't want to lose it's right in front of the uh, center support bearing. 
So sometimes you might need to use a press, but in my case, it actually just came off of my hand because it was so loose. You can see it just came off here, so that was nice. And yeah, you wanna make sure to get that washer. There's two washers, one in front of the uh, carrier bearing and one behind it. So you don't wanna lose that. And yeah, rusty spline, but the way it goes. So yeah, you can see how uneven the uh, rubber is there. You can see it's cracked also. Um, yeah, just wore out pretty much. I'll show you the new one here. Um, yeah, this is a new one. This is not OEM Toyota. This is just an aftermarket company, but it'll do for now, for sure. Do side-by-side -side comparison. You can see the new rubber, old one, yeah. Definitely time to replace. And also the new one came with these weird kind of hook things that you don't really need in my app. Alright, so I cleaned the uh, splines off. Also, where the center support bearing sits as well. It's kind of like a bearing surface there. Clean that up and we're just putting some grease on here. To make everything smooth, put on, and also it prevents rust as well. So yeah, just putting it all around there and on your new center support bearing, you're just gonna have some shipping packing grease in there. So you wanna add grease, definitely. And yeah, just start putting it in kind of the grooves there. There's holes you can actually put it in too. Then you just won't have a problem. All right, so next we're ready to put on the uh, center support bearing. So just slide it on past the bearings there and watch for the notches it only goes on one way just towards it once that's snug you can just grab your small washer and just put it on put a little bit of grease on there and make it fit better and yeah all right so the next step is going to be putting on the flange onto the splines so um, you want to look for the dot on the flange and the dot on the spline so they line up there's actually like a master key spline you could call it it only fits on one way so once you get that lined up then you can get your thick washer put that on followed by your lock nut and just thread that on and then we're going to be looking at the torque specs so in my Haynes manual here it shows you that step one's 134 foot pounds, step two is loose in one, one turn, and then tight into 60 foot pounds. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna put that to 134 first, and we're gonna torque her down, just like that. And then we're gonna rotate at half a turn, and then rotate at half a turn again. And then it'll be one full turn. And then finally, I'll torque it to 60 foot pounds. And once that's done, you can get a little punch. And you can punch that little piece down so it doesn't move. And then she'll be locked right up. Alright, I'm back at the tailgate here. And just got my grease gun. And the good thing about Toyota pickups, um, they all got these grease nipples or zerk fittings in all of your center universal joints. So grease them all out you know three to four pumps not like 20 or until it's seeping so just three to four and that's just all right so um at this point i am ready to put the two part dry shaft into one part i should guess you could call that um upper half and the lower half just goes together mounts off two flanges and it's bolted together by two bolts and or four bolts and four nuts so we're just going to put it together but it's got to be the exact same way you took it off. So make sure you mark that when you take it off for sure. Or you don't have to worry about dry shaft phasing after that. So yeah, just torque them down. I think they're torqued to 54 foot pounds, something like that. But just grab your open end wrench and tighten them. It's pretty tight and that should be good to go. All right guys, so um, I'm finally under the truck again. And um, I apologize for this poor lighting in this clip here. But anyways, um, 
I got the dry shaft and I'm ready to put it on the transmission flange. And that's where you start. So you put it on those studs. You got studs there. And then pretty much you put the center support bearing bolts in. There's two bolts. Once that's in, then you can go to the back and you can uh, torque those up and then tighten the transmission bolts. And that's the sequence I would use for sure. So a few things you want to worry about is dry shaft phasing. Make sure you mark everything before it comes off and put it together all the same way. And you shouldn't have any problem. Alright, that was a video on how to replace your carrier bearing. Thanks for watching and see you guys later.